Hello, this is Kimberly Fawn from Clear Center. I'm here with Dave Loper, and in today's screencast, we're going to cover how to set up storage volumes uh, with Linux RAID. We'll be talking about how to see your disks from command line, how to create a volume or volume set with Linux RAID, and mounting and auto mounting your volume. So, David, can you talk to us about that? Yeah, absolutely. So, um, with our setup today, we've got a microserver Gen 10, and what's really neat about the way I've got this box configured, and by the way, this is exactly the way I have my box configured at home, is we've got a SSD in the media bay, and we've got um, four uh, disks in the disk bay. So we're, we're maximizing this box, we're kind of doing a NAS approach to it, and in, uh, in a typical setup for ClearOS, if you've got all the disks ahead of time, and you're doing the install, you can actually set up this uh, RAID configuration with graphical tools during the installation. But with uh, this box, we're kind of going through the scenario of, well, what if you decided to add disks later, or you needed to uh, create a, a RAID set after the fact where you've got um, Linux already running and, and ClearOS as your system. So this is an existing ClearOS system. It's already been registered. And we've got, like I said, our OS is running on a, an SSD. So the, uh, when we want to look at our disks, there's a couple of tools that we can do to uh, look, uh, use to look at that. And the, the one that's traditionally used is this, um, this thing called FDisk. So we're going to do an FDisk minus L to show all of the volumes. Now, a lot of stuff went flying by. Um, if you're on the console directly itself, you know, you're not going to be able to see that. You may have to pipe it into less or something like that. I oftentimes, when I want to get just the, the bare uh, list, I just do a grep for disk. And there it shows me all of the volumes. So here you can see I've got my SDA, that's my operating system, is on that SSD. And I've got four uh, three and a half inch drives. They're all two terabytes. And those are our targets that uh, we want to look at. So I've got SDB, SDC, SDD, and SDE. So uh, I want to take a look real quick to make sure that these are blank. You can use the um, FDisk space minus L and then the name of the drive to see what it looks like. Now, if there was a partition, it would show up underneath that IO size area. So this, this drive is completely blank. And if I repeat this command, I can go through my different drives that I have as my targets here and see that they're all blank. So let's get started. We're going to create some partitions here. Now, there uh, traditionally, that FDisk tool was used for creating partitions. Um, but any more these days, you want to get familiar with the parted tool uh, because it is a lot better for setting up uh, larger partitions, especially drives over two terabytes in size. So we're going to use parted minus a optimal and the name of our drive. So we're going to do the first one, that's SDB, and it brings us into this uh, little command interface. Um, so the first thing that you need on a drive is you need a label. Now, <clears throat> the most common uh, drive labels that you'll use in Linux is <laughs> coincidentally the MS DOS label which is kind of the old school way to do it, um, or you can use the GPT. Uh, GPT is what uh, we recommend for doing uh, NAS type disks because it lets you use the full size of the disk. It also lets you, uh, it also is really good for uh, UEFI, for example. Um, so we're gonna set up with a, uh, a partition that is there. So we're gonna do make label uh, GPT. And after that, we're going to make our partition. So we're going to say make part primary. Now I'm putting down ext2. Don't get too concerned about that. Um, since we're setting this up as RAID, I have to put something in there. And ext2 is typically what we're going to put there. It's actually not going to be ext2 when we're done. So here I'm saying start at the 0% of the disk for the start of the drive and go to the end. 100% for the, the end of the partition. Okay, now that's done. Now here we're going to set it as a um, RAID volume. So I'm going to set partition one with the RAID flag. 
And now that is all done. So we're going to say quit. And now if we take a look at that disk with the uh, uh, fdisk minus l dev sdb, we're going to see there's our partition and it's uh, Linux RAID. So perfect. So now we got to repeat that command for all of these other drives. So I have a question. Sure. We have the capability to set up our RAID disks during the install of ClearOS. Yes. Why would we want to do what you're doing here at the command line? In what cases would it be easier to do it here? Well, say for instance you got a box uh, like the microserver and it came with a one terabyte hard drive with ClearOS installed on it. And you said to yourself, well, this one terabyte is really great except for the fact that I need to really maximize that space, right? I want to put a larger drive in there. I want to put a four terabyte drive in there and I want an SSD for the operating system. And so you're going through this process of reinstalling uh, Linux. And maybe you get like uh, you're ready to do the install and you go and you do the install, but your, your, your larger drives haven't all arrived yet in the mail, right? You, you, you order them online and they're not there, but you're ready to get going and you're wanting to get it set up and started. Well, you don't have to wait until that is the, the case. You can get started right away as long as you're familiar with the tools. And that's why we're doing the how-to today. Um, another situation may be that, say, for instance, you, you started out with a, um, a one uh, a one terabyte disk that comes with the microserver Gen 10, and you decided, well, I want more expansion, and so you went and bought three other hard drives to put in the other bays, and now you want to um, set up ClearOS, uh, you know, th those those drives for a large data partition. So that would be another um, situation where you would you would be setting up this RAID outside of the installation tool. Okay. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. All right. So uh, I'm going to make the labels here and we're going to repeat their commands here. So I'm just going to copy and paste those, especially this long one here. And set the rate on and quit. And we're going to go do the next one, SDD. Same thing. Make label GPT. Make part, set raid, quit, and SDE. That's our last one. Oops. Make label, make part, set raid, and quit. Okay, so now we have our four drives that are uh, partition. Let's do another F disk minus L. And we can see they're going to all show up like that. You can use parted as well to list your drives. Um, and now we're ready to make our RAID. So with the RAID, uh, uh, software RAID under Linux, uh, it's most common to use a module called the multi-disk uh, RAID manager. So um, the command that we're going to do, so we know our drives are um, S, D, B, uh, C, D, and E. So we're going to make a RAID 5 out of this. And you can change some of these parameters if you want a different result here. So we're going to go and do a create. I want to be verbose, meaning that I want to know um, as it's doing it, I want it to tell me the different things that it's going to do. And I'm going to say uh, dev MD 0. I'm going to set it to the level of uh, RAID 5. And if you wanted to do RAID 6, I mean, you could do that as well. Uh, RAID devices equals, I'm going to do four of them. And now if I did three, I could also use a switch to set up a spare. So maybe I wanted one, I just wanted to do three drives in a RAID 5 and have the fourth one be a hot spare so that if any of them fail, it automatically starts rebuilding them. Um, so you can do that as well. But here I'm going to use all of them. So dev sdb1, dev sdb2, oh, sdc1. So these are the first partitions of all these drives. Dev sdd1 and dev sde1. Okay.
there we go. So it started it, it set it, uh, it's, it's all set up, and we can see here that it's completed. So one thing that you can do to check on this is you can do this um, cat of proc md stat. So this, this stat file, md stat file doesn't actually exist. It's not really a file. It's part of the proc system. So it's telling you what's going on dynamically with the system. What's neat about this command is you can actually do uh, a watch on this watch cat proc md stat and uh oh typed it wrong and it will give you a it'll refresh it every two seconds and so effectively it will look like a progress bar with you know incrementing numbers it's telling you how long it's going to finish obviously that's going to take a while to set up so we've got a long road ahead of us 544 minutes left until the raid is all uh, protected. Now that doesn't mean that I'm going to keep you on this video that long. Um, what we can do, we can start using that right away, that partition right away. It, it just won't become uh, redundant until uh, it's finished. So it's trying to write all the parity bits. So what we're going to do here is we're just going to press on and uh, format this this drive. So we set it up as dev md0 and I'm going to make a file system here. I'm going to make it ext4 and you can use whatever you want but I'm just going to use ext4 since I'm more comfortable with the recovery tools of uh, that and dev md0. Alright so there it goes. Now this process normally would go pretty fast but it's actually going to take a little bit longer than it normally would simply because we're contending for uh, bandwidth on the disk. Uh, the I.O. on the disk is going crazy right now, writing out all of the uh, information to, um, to the, that drive. It's trying to create the RAID set. Um, and right in the middle of this, we're telling it to um, set out some partitions and some super blocks and things like that. So. This is going to take a little bit longer. Now, after this is done, we will actually have our formatted volume set and we can start using it. So where this comes in really handy uh, in, in your design for your, uh, your server is that in a NAS or a network attached storage device, you're going to set up a, a box that has a lot of space. And you're going to be able to do all kinds of great apps here for storing things like, uh, you know, you could set it up for a file server for map network drives. You could set it up as a, uh, a large FTP server. You could set it up as a Plex media server. There's a lot of different things you can do. And because it's clear OS, you can do all of those things at the same time. So um, this is going to give us a large volume. We're going to take a look at it in just a second here. So. First, uh, I want to go kind of to our last main step and then I want to uh, kind of give a synopsis here. The block ID will show you the UUIDs associated with the different devices on your system. So here I can see that the UUID for the device was automatically set up to this value here. Now this is important. I can go ahead and mount this device by the dev md0 if I wanted to. But it is possible for things to change because you change things in the environment. Or say you got a different uh, device that thought it wanted to be md0. Th those types of things are possible. What's highly unlikely is that that UUID number would ever be um, duplicated in your lifetime uh, in, in all of, of what you do in computing. So we're going to use that to uh, mount this. So we want to mount this in a permanent way. So that means making changes to the FS10. I use Vi, but you can use Nano to edit this file. If you're coming from the DOS world, you probably want to use Nano. I'm going to show you both of those tools real quick here. Um, I'm going to add this with Vi, though paste that in here. I want to do uh, this to store data one. This is where I'm going to mount this. And it was ext4. And I want to set it to the defaults. 
and zero zero. All right. Now again, you can use nano as well, and how that would work is you would just uh, make your changes like you would in a text file, um, like in in Windows. Anything that you do is kind of always live, and then you do a Control O to write the file. It'll give you the file name. You say enter, and it will write the that out. It may ask you to overwrite it, and then Control X to exit. All right, so that's our FS tab file. Now that's important because when your system boots, it's going to read that file and decide where it's going to mount it. Now I need to make that directory where I'm going to land this volume. So that's store data one. And now I can mount it. Mount, and I can just say mount store data one. And it will look up in that FS tab file. It will see the block ID and it will. Um, use that UUID to find the disk and to mount it. And there it is, it's mounted. So if we do an ls of store data zero, I would expect there to be a not found, lost, lost plus found folder. That's for recovered files. Um, if you have a scan disk uh, or uh, a FSCK that finds errors, they're gonna show up in that lost plus found folder. So this is good, and I can see this. Um, I can see this volume now when I do a DF, which is short for disk free space minus H. Minus H makes it human readable. If I don't have the H in there, it's going to put it in regular uh, bytes. But here I'm doing it in a minus H. I can see I've got the store data one partition. It's 5.2 terabytes in usable size. That is my. And again, I started out with four two terabyte disks so that's the no, that's about the number that I would expect it to be you can see the original size is uh, 5.5 terabytes um, the reason for the difference between this and the other is that um, Linux will automatically reserve a portion of disk to be useful to um, an operating system so and that's where the other almost 3 gigabytes. 300, yeah, 300 gigabytes uh, are being allocated. Oh, 300, okay. Yeah, it's like, um, I think it's like 5%, uh, 5% 5 in reserve. Now, you can use the um, Tune2FS and other tools to uh, free up that, uh, free up that space. And, um, and we'll we'll talk about that in another podcast on on when we talk about storage, kind of more deep dive into tuning disks and tuning disk performance. But um, yeah, that uh, that reserve, you know, on a NAS device, you'd want to definitely get rid of that. Anyway, that's that's about it from here on out. That that puppy is going to mount every single time. Well, great. Thank you, David. I really appreciate you talking to us today about how to see your disks from command line, creating a volume or volume set with Linux RAID, and how to mount and auto mount your volume. Um, check back later with us for more content from ClearCenter and Hewlett Packard Enterprise. Thank you.